welcome to Rusty Hammer Forge. Today we are going to be making some copper, just like this. This copper billet here, um, because I need to have some that is thick enough for a bolster plate and spacer instead of the normal um, pipe copper that I use. I'm taking the same pipe copper, and which is this piece right here, and we're gonna smash this up, fold it in on itself, heat it up, and basically weld it all together into one homogenous piece, like this. But before we did any welding, let's get over to the anvil and let's start flattening out this piece of pipe and get the initial folds in there that we need and stick it in the forge. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start by flattening down our pipe. This is about inch and a quarter maybe inch and three-eighths. We're just gonna start by flattening it down. So you're just gonna flatten it all the way out. Until you have a nice flat billet. And we're gonna take and stick it in here, over here in the vise, about halfway. About, about halfway. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. Turn it over. Got a hot dog salad over. And then we're gonna take and close that up on the anvil and start folding it. Okay, so the next step we're gonna take now that we have our copper pipe folded in half, is you're gonna start folding it back and forth in on itself like an accordion. And you're gonna fold it this one way, fold it back the other way until you have it stacked up, leaving a little tab at the end that you'll then fold over on the very end when you get a big long piece out here. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go back over the vise. We're gonna start folding it back and forth. Okay, now that we got our billet of copper here, we're going to go start the forge, heat it up, and start forming this. Now the first couple heats in this, while the forge is warming up, that's just to close down all these little gaps in there and get everything touching right away. So it's not gonna be really hot. It's probably gonna be right around, oh, 1400 degrees, give or take 100, 100 degrees or so. And we're just gonna get it compacted so that all surfaces are touching and then as the forge heats up and we get that nice optimal uh, adhesion temperature right around 2250 is what we're shooting for and it, we're going to then just start treating it like we would a normal billet and we're not going to hit it too long and we're not going to as, as the heat dives off of it we're going to hit it less and less and less and then until right before we put it in there we're just going to be doing some planishing looks. I think that's super important. Now, I've never done this before, so we're just testing this out. You're testing it along with me. If people are out there have done this a lot um, and they want to correct me on this, feel free to. I'm a beginner at working with copper in this type and trying to get it to the thicknesses that I want it. So this is just this is an informative educational video for me as, is, as it is for you. So let's see what we can do with it and uh, let's get started. We'll see you on the flip side.
Okay, welcome back here at our nice big Peter Wright Amble. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the uh, time lapse video and everything. This is not the only way to do this, and it's by far not the cleanest way to do it. But this allows me to get what I needed. I needed a relatively thick billet um, to do some bolster plates and some spacers that a client wants. And so instead of uh, waiting around collecting a bunch of copper or going to my buddies and using up his copper and doing a pour and we pour ingots um, or little pucks they, I decided to just you know do what a blacksmith does and weld them together so it's it's a uh, pretty easy process it's a lot easier um, than working with a ferrous material which is a, an iron based material um, because you, it's so malleable under heat that it doesn't take much to get it to stick together. Um, if it wasn't welded, now it's not perfect, I, I want to make sure you know that, but if it wasn't welded, since it's folded so many times in, in here, that when you, it would have fell apart as soon as I cleaned up the edges and dressed the edges on this. So there was a few air pockets in there and what you can do to um, get away from those, as soon as you find an air pocket, what you do is you take this chisel and you open it up and they start welding the same way you do when you find a little bubble in a billet of, of Damascus steel is you want to cut that open and then flux it and weld it all back together. There's no flux involved in welding non-ferrous materials. You just got to heat it up and beat it. Heat it and beat it. So hopefully this um, helps anybody else out there that's trying to figure out how to get thicker copper without doing a pour. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed this. This is actually my first time doing this um, type of, of smithing, and it was a lot of fun. You know, it uh, opens up a lot of doors, you know, for, for different applications. And I could continue folding and stacking and folding and stacking and folding and stacking and get, and get this thoroughly mixed. But for what I need it for, um, it is, it's pretty good. You know, if I was wanting to do a, a very large bolster out of this that was split in half I would definitely want to continue to fold and mix and fold and mix and fold and mix this just to make sure that all my welds and seams were, were precisely um, together and they aren't going to come apart or you're not going to get any of these weird inclusions in it so but since I'm using such thin pieces and it's not that big of a deal they're, they're not structural they're just decorative um, I'm just going to go with what I have and I got to make um, enough to do five knives that's two per so we're talking um, a roughly two inches of material two inch square material or inch probably inch and a half square material um, times two per per project so I got a ways to go so I'm gonna let you guys go I'm gonna get back to work and we'll see you on the flip side take it easy stay safe and forge on